This is Roberta Foster, and welcome to today's edition of The Author's Corner, brought to you by KNEO, 91.7 FM, The Word. And today I welcome Chilia Newbell to Author's Corner, and she has written the book Jesus and the Gift of Friendship, which is published by Crossway. And she'll tell you more about how to find the book at the end of the program. And Chilia, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Is this the first book you've written or you have published others? I have written several books. I think I've, I I don't remember how many, but I have written um, at least five kids books and several books for adults, Bible studies and other um, resources that people can use to study God's word, which is what I love, you know, to think about God's word and to help people engage with his word. And then I've um, written some trade books. So book writing and publishing and thinking about books is what I do. I actually am the acquisitions director at Moody Publishers. So I also um, help find authors, which is such a joy. Yeah. So I am in all in the publishing industry. (laughs) Well, you mentioned you've written other children's books. Um, Do you find it uh, easier to write children's books or adult books as far as being able to include that content that you try to um, in that book? Yeah, it all depends. It's it's easier in so far as it takes less time, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Books for adults take a long time, sometimes nine months to a year before and longer, depending on what you're writing. But for a kid's book, it takes it just does not take as long. However, to take a big theological concept uh-huh. and make it in some one word, you know, encapsulate all of this big, these big ideas mm-hmm. into a word. Now that is hard. And it takes a lot of prayer and thinking mm-hmm. and uh, wordsmithing and going back and forth, just trying to make sure that you can capture something that it, that uh, whole books are written about. <laughs> right. The image of God is a good example. The Imago Dei yes. in one of yeah in one of my books, I was like, what? How can I capture um, that concept in one word? And and the, that's where there are entire books written on it. So that's where it gets hard, mm-hmm. and it's at, it's an absolute joy as well because I feel like I know what I believe more when I've written a kid's book. Because <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. you, you have to you have to make sure to be able to concisely right. write it right. and think about it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I understand this book is written for kids ages three through six, and um, it's regarding finding friendship and making Jesus our best friend. But you also uh, include in here the theme of uh, rejection, uh, where kids yeah. experience rejection when they want a friend and that other person doesn't seem to want to be a friend to them. Um, you know, when I think of kids three to six years old, to me, I can't hardly imagine that even being a situation, but apparently so. Yeah, I mean, it, think about when playing on a playground and someone will be a little scared and shy, mm-hmm. so they don't want to come out mm-hmm. or, or in play. Or maybe all of a sudden they're playing with their toy, the thing that they want, and there's a fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, these things happen all of the time. Okay. So helping kids think through, okay, well, if someone doesn't really want to play or if someone is maybe a little more timid or shy – it's okay. You can be sad, but you run to the Lord and ask Him for a friend or ask mm. Him for help. And so I I like to put kids in realistic yes. situations yes. because these things happen. And it would be easy for me to write a, you know, a kind of shiny, happy <laughs> kids book where everyone comes together and yay, we've got our friends. But that's not real life. There's tension and there's there's a need for the Lord, the need to pray for him and ask him for help. And I want to um, help kids think through that. What does it look like when someone doesn't want to play with me? Oh, uh, well, I can go to the Lord and ask him um, for help and ask him for a friend. Well, this book is uh, based on John fifteen twelve through 15. So why don't you tell us how that verse inspired you to write the book? 
Yeah, well, Jesus is telling his disciples, it's a part of that farewell discourse, the I am statements, and he's telling his disciples, you are my friends if you do what I say, if you obey me. And and so I just wanted um, kids to know that, one, obviously, we want to obey the Lord, but two, we can be his friend, <laughs> which is remarkable. Right. He, Yes, but he calls us his friends, and so we're not just his followers. I think it's something that is shocking. It's it's amazing, and it's so kind of the Lord. And as a friend, what do we do with friends? We tell them what we are feeling. We mm-hmm. tell our friends um, our, our deepest secrets. We tell our friends all of these things. And so I want kids to get in the habit of thinking of the Lord, not just, and and as holy and set apart, which mm-hmm. he is, and we should think that way, um, but also as someone that we can approach, mm-hmm. and we can, uh, but by his grace, we can approach him. Mm-hmm. So we can tell him anything, we can ask him for anything, and he invites us to. And so it's really um, remarkable to me. And if kids can, if kids can grasp this now, how easier it will be as we become adults to run to the Lord. Amen. Well, we've got more to talk about with Trillia Newbell about her book, Jesus and the Gift of Friendship. It's published by Crossway. You're listening to Author's Corner, and I'm Roberta Foster. So as you, as I'm looking through the book, great illustrations. So why don't you give a shout out to the illustrators before we get more into the themes of the book? So Crossway, they chose these illustrators, and, and they did such a great job, Kristen and Kevin. I, I may say their their um, last names wrong, Halshul, Halshul, <laughs> but they they just did a great a great job illustrating and capturing the emotions of the um, Zeke, the the lead character in in this little story, and um, and really I love that it. The pictures are kind of imaginative, so it's not necessarily real life. Everything's extreme, right? So he's digging in dirt, and he's stuck way, way down deep. So it kind of gives you an idea of what he probably is feeling at the time um, visually. So I, I do love it. And so give us a kind of a capsulated summary of your book without giving away the whole story. <laughs> okay. Zeke moved away, and he was very, very, very sad. And when he he's praying about a friend, his mom tells him, okay, this is what you can do. You can ask the Lord for a friend. And then his mom explains to him that Jesus had friends and that Jesus is our friend. And so Zeke is praying and waiting, and he waits longer than you would think for a friend. And a a friend does come, but I will I won't spoil it for you, but the Lord answered his prayers, but he answered it in the way that God knew best. And that is kind of the part of that lesson that we get to run to the Lord and pray to the Lord and ask him for good gifts and he does give them in the way he desires. Hmm. Well, the other thing I like about the book is it's not intentionally drawing to people of different uh, skin colors or anything, but you mix that into the book in a way that makes it a natural, and um, I just really appreciate that, too. Yes, thank you. Yes, I, I do believe that this this idea and, and of the church is made of all Tribes, Tongues, and Nations is important, and though this is not um, centered on that theme, um, I do, yeah, I have people who are diverse so that the kids can see themselves in the story, Mm -hmm. but also so that we have that mind about ourselves as we're praying and thinking about um, friends and people we associate with. We just always want to be thinking outside of um, our, our, not only just our comfort zone, but thinking beyond the way the Lord thinks Mm -hmm. his gospel is for every tribe tongue and nation and so I want us to always be thinking that way and it's something that kids don't have a problem with um it's after right. they get around adults that it seems like they have more of a problem with that. And, of course, the world is trying to make that such a big issue today where um, I'm glad that you just incorporated it and made it natural. 
just a common yeah. everyday thing um, to to have friends that don't look exactly like us. Yes, I I think you're exactly right, and and of course, yes, kids they are going to learn to have those issues and the the tendency towards partiality is often taught, mm-hmm. and and so yes, I'm so uh, glad that you noticed that. I do want it to it to be natural, not forced, mm-hmm. and I think that that is how life should be, <laughs> that it should be a natural part of our um, living and being and being a part of a community and um, not something that we feel like we have to do, but that we want to do and that we enjoy. Well, obviously, uh, parents are probably going to be involved in reading these books to um, to their children or an adult of, of some relationship. So I can imagine that this will speak to the heart of the adults as well. Uh, lasting friendships are something that seem to be difficult for many adults to even create. So um, give some tips to adults about friendship. Okay, so this is for for adults to, to form friends then. Right. Um, yeah. Well, I think the same thing we that I tell the kids we have to do. We really need to go to the Lord in prayer and ask him for help and discernment and wisdom. Um, We also have to evaluate our schedules. Most of the time, we struggle to make friends because we don't have the margin for friends. And so one of the things that my husband and I have had to be intentional about is reserving maybe a meal a month where we're making sure that Mm. we invite someone into our home or go and be with other people it's very it has to be intentional because our schedules are so full and so we yeah we're caring for teenagers and so we we have to be intentional about pursuing people um and i think that's the same for everyone it's it's just an intentionality and then we have to be available ourselves um if someone pursues us and um, and I think another thing for adults, at least that I've seen that's been, is a fear of vulnerability, mm. being honest. And I think that you will see quickly that you can grow friendships when you're really open and honest. Mm. And I'm not saying to everyone, right? But that as you pray and discern um, the right people to open up to, I think that is something that we have to just, build a muscle for Mm. again as adults is because kids they're just (laughs) (laughs) but adults we we can become cynical or we can lose that kind of trust that childlike trust Mm -hmm. um yeah because we've been hurt or there's a number of things right so i i do believe bringing that to the lord all of our pain all of our hurts um all of our fears and then being intentional and being vulnerable will assist with friendships. But I, I, I'm the first to admit that building friendships as adults is much harder than when you were kids and you had all the time and mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just a different different season. Yeah. Well, I totally agree with you about the intentionality because friend having a friendship is work. And so it's yeah. another uh, time frame you have to um, build into the schedule, as you said. Well, Trillia, we're running out of time already, so let me remind the listeners, I've been talking with Trillia Newbell, and she has written this really cute and um, very inspirational book called Jesus and the Gift of Friendship. So Trillia, tell our listeners how they can find more about this book and others that you've written. Yes, so Jesus and the Gift of Friendship is available wherever books are sold. So if you search Jesus and the Gift of Friendship, wherever books are sold, you can find it there. You can find out more about me at trillianewbell.com. And so if you find my name.com, you can find everything. <laughs> All righty. And we certainly thank Crossway for providing a copy of Jesus and the Gift of Friendship written by Trillia Newbell. And uh, Trillia, thank you so much for being with us on Author's Corner. Thank you. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in. If you missed any part of today's interview or would just like to hear it again, you can find it on your favorite podcast platform or through KNEO.org. I'm Roberta Foster on The Author's Corner. Join me again next time. Do you have five minutes for God? 
I'm Pastor Ed Wilson, and I believe there's no better way to begin each morning than spending a little time with Him. That's why every weekday morning I bring you a short devotional broadcast designed just for that. Look up God's Five Minutes wherever you get your podcast to kickstart your spiritual walk for each day, and we'll always do it in five minutes or less. Have you talked to God today?